I'm Dame Jenny Murray. I work primarily as a presenter on Radio 4's Woman's Hour, uh, but I'm also a non-executive director at the Christie Hospital because it's where I was treated when I had breast cancer seven years ago now. I think what I'd like people to take away from watching this film is that an awful lot of us are going to get cancer or have somebody in our family who has cancer. And we have to learn how to live with or beyond it. And watching other people who have gone through it, who have coped with it, means actually it's not going to be as awful as you think it's going to be. My name's Rothwell, John Rothwell. I'm 64 years young and six months ago I had a total gastrectomy. And that's as a direct result of being told I had stomach cancer. Yeah, my official title is uh, Operations Manager, but I'm really known as General Dog's Body because you get involved in a bit of everything. But after, um, I think it was six weeks, uh, I decided to come back to work. And I was fine during the morning, but as soon as two o'clock arrived, I started to feel weary and tired. So uh, I fell asleep. I actually nodded off when I was on the phone at one stage and the people around me just uh, accepted it and just left me alone and spoke quietly on the phone and got on, got on with the work, work style. So I didn't let the tiredness, the fatigue get, get on top of me. I, I just took it, took it as, as you should and fell asleep, woke up and carried on with work. That lasted about a month. I should say, um, and the tiredness went and uh, I was back full, in full swing. I'm Lucia, I'm 23 years old. My initial diagnosis was acute lymphoblastic leukaemia. I think my main issue was getting back into education, going back to college, because it was extremely intense. I tried while I was still on treatment to go back to do my A-levels and I, I just couldn't, I was too poorly. There were times where I'd go in later in the morning or leave earlier in the afternoon because the concentration issue was a big thing as well. I had to develop a new way of learning completely than before. I think the chemo definitely affected the way I learned and the way I held on to things. I've got the job I'm in now which is working in an MP's office. It's more of an office role. It's a lot less, well, it is a physical job and that has made a big difference. And they are, you know, really accommodating with me and they understand the implications of what's going on and that I still am monitored a lot. I'm, I'm woefully ignorant about any after effects of cancer treatment. I think you sort of think, oh, somebody's had cancer, they've had treatment, oh, look, they're better. Don't think about that there could actually be long-term after effects. The thing that, that survivors have got to do is actually have that confidence to talk to employers and say, well, actually, I'm not coping with this, or you need to make reasonable adjustment on that. We're playing with the pro, Peter Barber, who's been a uh, pro here for a number of years. He's been on the pro tours, uh, and I brought along a friend who I met on the 8th of June when I started my chemo, uh, a guy called Mark Winters. Uh, Mark and I have become like good friends over this last nine months or so. He had his operation three weeks before me, and he's been my soul of inspiration, really. And uh, it's the first time he's played here, and we're looking forward to a, a good game of golf. I've never had a hole in one, but uh, I'm hoping today may be the day. Hey there, John. You can see in your finish, yeah. both your hands are in front of your face. Is that and, wrong? Your, and your right foot is still on the floor. Uh, I found with the fatigue, um, fresh air is good for you. And it, the easiest thing is to stay in bed, not get out of your gym jams and just mope around the house. But they are, they, they, you need to fight everything, basically. You've got to set yourself goals and you keep objectives. Busy. Keep busy. Show me that finish. Hold it. And what you need to do <laughs> is don't practice near any water. <laughs> I feel a lot more active, even in my mind, pre-exercise. Mm. And, and then when you get out, you're quite surprised at the amount of, of, uh, of what you're able to do. When you get out onto the course, 18 yeah. holes is a, is a long walk, you know. It's um, five miles normally, yeah. but probably six or seven the way, the way we, we go. Uh, yeah. like the Red Arrows, yeah. yes. <laughs> any advice, I'll help. <laughs> My appearance was obviously a lot different as well. My hair was still really short. I didn't look normal, I didn't feel normal for a long time. And mine was ALL, 
acute lymphoblastic leukemia. Um, I was diagnosed in 2004, in September. Had my last treatment December 2006. I helped you, because I was a bit in front of you. I was yeah. about a year in front of you, wasn't I? So, in terms of treatment, that is. And I used to tell you about certain treatments, I didn't know that I'd have and you'd have coming up and things like that. One of my favourite hobbies, like lots of other girls my age, is the shopping. During and following my treatment, it was quite difficult to get out and about, so I did quite a lot of online shopping because there was quite a few barriers to me. And these included things like fatigue, and mobility problems, Disabled access was quite a hard one. I remember I was in my wheelchair and my friends had taken me out shopping and we got stuck in the tram tracks on Blackpool Prom, which was quite funny, especially when people saw me get out of the wheelchair and walk. And then we got, went into a shop and ended up taking the sail rail out of the door with me because they hadn't left enough room for my wheelchair. So as a result of the treatment, I was in a wheelchair because it had wasted my muscles and I had quite bad fatigue and joint pain. My consultant said um, we need to do an urgent MRI scan just to see if there's any damage from the chemo or if it's nerve damage. And I think at this point, I was quite convinced it was nerve damage. I didn't think anything had gone wrong because it was three years after my treatment and I thought, you know, to go this long and not have anything, it can't be very serious and they told me I had avascular necrosis, which I didn't have a clue what it was. I had absolutely no idea. I was just sat there and my consultant told me basically my joints had become damaged because of the chemo. One of the, the side effects from, from the chemo and the operation is you're guaranteed to lose weight. And losing weight's not always a bad thing. Yeah. And now I'm fine, I've got more energy than I had before I had the yeah. operation. Yeah, I agree uh, with that. One of my major uh, worries was every single orifice I've got, have I had problems with it? I've had um, uh, a nosebleed, I've had vertigo from my ears, I've had uh, thrush from my, from my tongue, and the worst thing, the one that keeps me indoors, is diarrhea. And I've really suffered with that. And that's been a problem, getting out the door to get on the golf course, because every half hour I was needing to go. Uh, I've got that under control now with my diet. Basically, um, they, they tell you uh, after the operation it's, it's life-changing. You're going to have to eat smaller amounts more often. And I thought, took no notice of that. I'll just carry on as I'm doing before. I've always enjoyed food. I've got uh, my taste buds are fine. But I was, I had, it's quickly realised that you can't just have a big meal at night. You've got to have six or seven small meals. And once you control that, you, it controls your backside as well. So things start to feel better. This is definitely in, isn't it? Yeah, it's in. Yes. There you go. <laughs> Only one. <laughs> ah, that'll do. First ever. You, you listen to the media, don't you? And it's all the time now on the radio and the TV saying that uh, if you find blood in your stool, then you need to go to see the doctor. It, it may not be cancerous, yeah. but you need to get it checked out. So now since the operation, I know it sounds embarrassing, but you, you, you do tend to look to see if it's the right colour. Yeah, I, yeah, and, I always inspect, yeah. yeah and yeah. one day I, I, I did look and uh, I thought, oh no, there's blood there. And I found out it was just a cherry tomato. That I, <laughs> <laughs> I was scared of relapse, constantly scared of relapse. Um, it, it was like a big safety net, the chemo, as much as it made you feel so poorly you knew that it was doing something and, and when that was taken away I honestly thought right this is, it's a waiting game now it's only a matter of time I've got to pack in as much as I can. My wife coined the phrase that we felt after treatment and after being signed off that we were kind of cast adrift that was our interpretation of it I'm sure that's not the situation because we, with the, the aftercare and the the ability to contact Christie's at any time is there for you. Um, but yes, I did. I felt as though you were on your own and um, constantly I was worried, and still am, about recurrence. And, uh, uh, and that has been an issue for me because it's never ever been, I've never been a negative person. I've always been a very positive person and uh, uh, the thought of uh, the cancer recurring has been a, a, a quite a serious issue for me. Obviously we've had difficult conversations which other people our age probably haven't had to have, like, no. about fertility and things like that. Well, we don't dwell on it, we just have the attitude of, 
when it happens, we'll deal with it then. One of my aspirations for the future is to train as a social worker and work with families, children and young people who have either gone through the diagnosis of a serious illness or cancer as it's something I feel really passionate about. I've been there myself and I feel like I could make a real difference to other people. I'm a workaholic, so I'm like I'm 65 in a few months, but I don't want to retire. I want to carry on working as long as I can. Uh, it's something I enjoy doing. I now have a three-year-old grandson and uh, another grandchild on the way. Life's brilliant, looking forward to that. I get married in September. That's a new start for me. Life's good. Life's definitely good. I don't like to use the word cure, but, you know, we're living with the fact that we've had it and we hope we're not going to get it again. Uh, some of us do have to live with it if we have secondaries, but even then, you have a whole life in front of you and you have to discover how am I going to live that life knowing that I've had this disease in my background. <laughs>